Welcome back to yet another week of the One Chart at a Time video series. We continue our trek through graphs and charts that are used to show distributions in your data or uncertainty in your data. And on today's episode of the video series, we are going to talk about the stem and leaf plot, which is kind of an interesting chart type because it combines a table with the graph, it uses numbers, it uses text, so that you can see the distribution in your data. And to help us learn more about this particular chart type, we're going to hand it over to Vitria Bird from Purdue University to help us learn more about the stem and leaf plot. Thanks, John. And thank you for joining me for this discussion on stem and leaf plots. Stem and leaf plots are a histogram-like display of raw values in a data set. They are an excellent way to start an analysis. They allow you to summarize the data and preserve the data at the same time. It keeps the data in their original form and the values of each individual data can be recovered from the plot. It can be easily constructed without using a computer, an added bonus. The basic idea is to divide each data point into what's called a stem and a leaf. A stem and leaf display or stem and leaf plot is a device for presenting quantitative data in a graphical format. They are useful for displaying the relative density of data and in assisting in visualizing the shape of a distribution. They are also useful for highlighting outliers and finding the mode of a distribution. They evolved from Arthur Boley's work in the early 1900s and are a useful tool in exploratory data analysis. STEM plots, as they were often called, became more commonly used in the 1980s after the publication of John Tukey's book on exploratory data analysis in 1977. When constructing a stem and leaf plot, the first step is to order or sort the data points in ascending order from smallest to largest. Next, you must determine what the stems will represent and what the leaves will represent. Typically, the leaf contains the last digit of the number and the stem contains all of the other digits. In the case of very large numbers, the data values may be rounded to a particular place value, such as the hundreds place that will be used for the leaves. You will round the data to two or three significant digits. The remaining digits to the left of the rounded place value are used as the stem. Now that you have determined what the stem and leaves will represent, the next step is to draw a stem-like axis that covers the range of potential values. Separate each data point into a stem component and a leaf component. Remember, the stem component consists of all but the rightmost digit, and the leaf component consists of the rightmost digit. Place each leaf value adjacent to its associated stem value one leaf on top of the other. The stem values are listed down vertically and the leaf values are listed next to them horizontally. This way, the stem groups the data points into bins and the leaf indicates a data point within that particular bin or group. One way to understand a stem and leaf plot is to create one. Let's take a look at an example. This example shows 10 data points to be plotted as a stem and leaf plot. The first step is to order the data points. The second step is to determine what the stems will represent and what the leaves will represent. In this example, our stems are indicated by the numbers zero through five. The next step is to draw a stem-like axis that extends from the data set's minimum to its maximum values. In this case, the axis multiplier is 10 to allow the viewer to decipher the value at each data point. The rightmost digit of each data point is then plotted against the stem-like axis as we move through the data set plotting each point until we have our completed stem and leaf plot. If you rotate it on its side, it looks like a histogram constructed from the digits of the data. This website shows the construction of the stem and leaf plot based on the data points in the previous example. If we scroll down, we'll see that once you rotate the stem and leaf plot, you're able to see the location of the data 
that can summarize or indicates its center. For example, in this example, the center of the above stem and leaf plot is located between 20 and 30. Rotating the stem and leaf plot also shows us the spread of the distribution. The shape of the distribution can also be seen as a skyline silhouette of the data. Using this metaphor, notice how the skyscraper in the middle of the distribution shows us actually what the mode is for this particular data set. The mode of this data set is in the interval 20 to 30. Also notice that the data demonstrate a pretty good symmetry around the mode. This website is very useful because it also shows you an example of how to create a stem and leaf plot when you have data points that have three significant digits and a decimal point. In such instances, first you'll need to round the data to two significant digits. The data that is rounded will be the points that will be plotted in the stem and leaf plot. In this example, we have the stems of values one, two, and three. You can see that the distribution of the data looks a bit squished. If you want to have a more in-depth look of the distribution, one way to do this is to spread out the distribution by splitting the stem into double values. Well, the first value is reserved for leaf values between zero and four, and the second stem value is reserved for leaf values between five and nine. Here's the same data with the double stem values. As you can see, each stem is listed twice. There is more than one correct way to plot a stem and leaf diagram for a given data set. The data visualization catalog shows an example of a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot. Back-to-back -back stem and leaf plots are typically used for comparing quantitative numerical data to two sets of categorical variables. In this example, the stem represents the hour and the leaves plotted on both sides of the stem represents the minutes within the hour. Reading the first row of this particular plot, we see that for the southbound times, the time is indicated as 505 and 548. This website created by the Shodor organization allows you to enter data points and it will actually generate your stem and leaf plot. What is really nice about this particular website is that it allows you to rotate or to toggle between a vertical plot and a horizontal plot. This gives you a quick view of your data. It also calculates the mean and the median for you. As you can see, the stem and leaf plot is a very powerful tool. Here are a few things to keep in mind. If some of the observations are not integers, then these numbers should be rounded. If there are some negative numbers in the data set, then a minus sign has to be put in front of the stem unit. If a larger number of bins is desired, then there may be two stems for each digit. Stem and leaf displays are only useful for moderately sized data sets, around 15 to 150 data points. With very small data sets, a stem and leaf display can be of little use as a reasonable number of data points are required to establish definitive distribution properties. With very large data sets, a stem and leaf display will become very cluttered since each data point must be represented numerically. A box plot or histogram may become more appropriate as the data size increases. This concludes the presentation on stem and leaf plots. Thank you so much for joining me. And thanks to Vitria for that great explanation of the stem and leaf plot. You can see all those great different tools that you can use to create these charts. You can see how they combine text and numbers, tables and charts into one visualization. 
So I hope you'll consider using it. I don't actually use a lot of stem and leaf plots in my own work, although in my new book, Better Data Visualizations, I do feature one from a Japanese train schedule um, so that you can see, you know, if the train leaves at 6 a.m., the six is on one side of the stem and then 30, 45, 50 is on the other side. So I hope you will think about ways in which you could use this particular chart type. So come back tomorrow and we're gonna talk more about graphs and charts that are used to show distributions in your data.